Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class, whenever you are deciding to join me and thank you for joining in our English Language Arts virtual instruction for the week of April 13th, 2020. I am so glad you're here. We are in quarter four, baby, the last quarter. Um, assignment three is the first uh, grade in quarter four. So assignments one and two have passed. There is no point in making them up if you haven't done that so far. I was very lenient with assignment one and two. Assignment three and four will be a different story, so make sure you are doing them so that we can end the quarter on a high note. Please and thank you. Here is an overview of what you will be responsible for for this week. You have your weekly attendance question, achieve article, and this week we'll be exploring an excerpt from the memoir Night by Ellie Wiesel. That is a great story. I am pretty sure most of you read it in middle school. I think it is one of the required texts. Um, so if that is the case, you'll just be revisiting it today. It's always nice to revisit great stories and Night is an amazing story. Uh, we'll knock out assignment four. Assignment four consists of uh, 4A, which is a quick pre-reading activity. 4B, which is our during reading activity, and 4C, which will be a post reading activity, all submitted at once within one document due on Friday, April 17th. And of course, you have your independent reading log, which is located on the same document. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and answer the attendance question on Teams. The question for this week What is one good thing that has come? out of being quarantined, think of something positive that has started to happen in the world or something you have experienced personally. Your response cannot be nothing or I don't know. If you can't think of anything that is personally, personally happening to you that's positive, think about something in the world that is happening that's positive because there have been some positive outcomes to this thing. Please post your answer by April 17th to be marked present for the week. I have a personal one. Um, with all of this time being home, um, I've been able to start some hobbies that I haven't done in quite a long time. Um, ever since I started teaching, I, for some reason, haven't found time to paint or write, and I've been able to do both, and it's very fulfilling. I feel like a brand new person, and I hope to keep it up even when we do go back to school. This week's, oh sorry, please complete the Achieve article for the week, a look back at Ellie Wiesel. Um, you need to score a 75% or higher for it to count. If you make less than a 75%, attempt the stretch activity. If you still not make a 75% or higher, I will average your two scores together. So if you uh, fail the article, you can still get full credit by attempting the stretch activity. And then I will still give you some points if you both if you do both the activity and stretch. If you only do one and fail it, I'm not going to give you any points. So please do both. And usually it's really crazy when you actually read the article, you pass the activity. So just read the article and then pass the activity and then you don't even have to worry about the stretch article or the stretch activity. And maybe, so this opens on Monday, it closes on Friday. Your assignments are still available to you after Friday. Um, if you don't get it done, you can turn it in late. I do not deduct points, but this closes on Friday. So you need to get this done first. Maybe all you do on Monday is get your Achieve article done. That's fine. You still have the rest of the week to do your assignment. Don't overwhelm yourself. If you take the time and read the article, you can pass it and you can do the assignment another day. All right, moving forward. This week's reading standard is RL 1.2. I can determine a theme within a text and analyze in detail its development over the course of a text, including how it emerges and is shaped and refined by specific details. So not only are we determining a theme, we are analyzing how it develops through the text. That is why our during reading activity is so important. It helps us see how the theme emerges is shaped and refined by specific details. 
Uh, notice that our standard is literary. It's RL 1.2. So the text this week is a literary text rather than informative. This standard analyzes theme, which we know is a universal life lesson the author wants to communicate to their reader. I love teaching theme. I know you guys know this. Um, and it is great when you're really involved in a story because of the characters or the plot line. And then you realize that it also has a life lesson or universal truth that it's communicating with you. It's a great aha moment while you're reading. I just love it. Um, but remember that theme can't be just a word or two. It has to be a statement. For example, in the text that we read while we were still at school, Romeo and Juliet, love is a thematic topic, right? But it's not a theme because we want to think about what Shakespeare is trying to teach us about love. We could say something like, love is a violent, ecstatic, overpowering force that supersedes all other values, loyalties, and emotions. That would be a terrific life lesson about love that Shakespeare was trying to teach us. We couldn't just say, the theme that in Romeo and Juliet is love. No, he was saying so much more than that, right? Saying that love blinds us and makes us forget about everything that we hold dear. We just care about the thing that we love. Anyways, we'll move on. Now let's re get ready to knock out our pre-reading activity assignment 4A. As you already know, because we say it every single week, strong readers always activate their background knowledge and make personal connections to any text they read. Before responding to the prompt, we'll watch a video that relates, the content, relates to the content of today's text. In continuing our journey towards the fight for survival, we'll explore Elie Wiesel's recollection of the tragic experiences within Nazi Germany's concentration camps during the Holocaust, which was captured in his memoir, Night. Please note that a memoir is a collection of memories that an individual writes about, moments or events, both public or private, that took place in the subject's personal life. Now we'll build our understanding of life in concentration camps through this YouTube video titled The Auschwitz Album. Please copy the link pause the video and paste it in your browser. I'll see you back here once you're finished. Another great way to um, see links in PowerPoints is if you hit control, the CTRL button, and you hover over the link, it should let you press on it. It'll open it in a new window, so you don't have to do all that copying and pasting. So pause the video here, go watch that, and then join me back here. All right, I hope um, the video was eye-opening. It definitely was for me. Now let's access assignment four and locate section 4A. So if you don't know how to find assignments, you go to your Teams page. You go to Assignments at the top. You click on Assignment 4, and here you have your Week 4 assignment. You have your PowerPoint, and I also uploaded um, a PDF version of the text because a lot of you have been messaging me saying the online textbook isn't working for you, so I uploaded it here as well. Um, I would still recommend going to the online textbook if you know how, because then you can use all the features, um, like you can highlight, take notes, you can, um, see the vocabulary, what the vocabulary words mean and stuff. So if you are able to access the online textbook, I would still do it that way. But if you are having trouble doing that, I did upload it, um, with the week four assignment. All right, so we have our week four assignment here. Follow along as I read the instructions for the pre-reading activity, part 4A. 
After you have viewed the YouTube video, the Auschwitz album visual evidence of the process leading to the mass murder at Auschwitz-Birkenau, respond to the two questions below in the space provided. Number one, in the face of humanity and the evils of mass genocide, do you believe that it is possible for a concentration camp prisoner to retain a sense of hope for a better future? Or do you believe that the realities of the Holocaust have stripped pr prisoners of optimism? Explain your position. And then number two, in the video, Elie Wiesel discusses his separation from his mother upon arrival to the concentration camp. The separation of families was common practice during the Holocaust and in some cases still occurs today. So if you think about, um, you know, refugees at the border. Why do you believe that family, separa family separation was a routine practice during the Holocaust? Consider how a united family that stays together may challenge the function of a concentration camp. Okay, so take about 10 minutes to think through and complete this activity before you jump into the text with me. When you're done, join me back in the slideshow. You may pause here. All right, welcome back. Earlier I mentioned that the focus for this week is reading standard RL 1.2, analyzing the development of theme. Our reading standard for today focuses on being able to determine a theme within a text. Remember that theme equals life lesson. So let's clarify the larger question that we must understand when reading our text tonight. The essential question is, what we must be able to answer by the end of our lesson, it is the reason you do the graphic organizer. A lot of you are not answering the essential question after you did all the work in the graphic organizer. The, the graphic organizer is helping you answer that essential question. So don't make all your work for nothing. Please answer that essential question. How, so our essential question is, how does Elie Wiesel develop the theme of strength through unity in his memoir, Night. Just to confirm that we're all on the same page with the meanings, let's clarify both strength and unity. So I have the um, definitions on the PowerPoint, so if you forget, you can always come back. Strength is one's ability to withstand great force or pressure, and it can be physically or mentally. When we say unity, we're referring to a strong sense of togetherness often with shared beliefs, goals, and experiences. While reading, we must ask ourselves how Wiesel and fellow prisoners are strengthened by their unity or togetherness as they endure the horrors of life in a concentration camp, more specifically during the selection process of mass genocide. We should think about how the inmates empower one another in various ways and compel each other to persist in their fight for survival. Now let's locate the graphic organizer that we'll use to interact with our essential question. This graphic organizer is assignment 4B. So right here. Follow along as I read the directions for the activity. While reading night, reflect on the unity illustrated throughout interactions among prisoners. The veterans, the blockist, the block teste, Ellie, Tibby, Yossi, Capo, and Ellie's father. For each prisoner's interaction identified, column one, so that's here. You guys can't even see this because I didn't share it with you. One moment. All right. For each interactant identified, column one, so that's here, we have the page number and lines that we are identifying. Describe the interaction. So this is column two. What is happening? 
and analyze the impact on the prisoners. So that's co column three. In column one, I've already identified evidence of unity among prisoners by including the page numbers and lines. So you do not have to do anything to this column. This column is done for you. Just pay attention to where it's directing your attention in the text. In column two, we need to clarify what's happening in the test text just to make sure we have a general understanding of the memoir. In order to get credit for this task, you must attempt to complete a description for each interaction outlined. So notice that I have some examples here and they are not quotes. They are um, summaries that I created. So you're not picking out quotes from the text. You are summarizing what you read. Most importantly, in column three, we're aiming for a deeper understanding with regards to how the men are impacted by the unity that they have built with, with one another. This unity will likely have a more mental or emotional impact, if not limited to physical power. You may encounter hope, optimism, fearlessness, and so on. The main point is to be able to clearly see the link between the relationships that the men have and how they help one another in the fight for survival. So how strength, how their unity leads to strength to survive. Even in the subtle, seemingly small ways. Okay, are you ready to start? Let's jump into, into the text. I would suggest you split your screen between the text and the graphic organizer, but keep the audio going that, so that we can read together. I'll give you a moment to locate the text. Remember, you can access the text through DCPS's single sign-on feature under Blended Learning. Click the Hofton Miffler Harcourt icon. Select Contents, Collection 5, Master Matter of Life or Death, and then select Night, and then select Read the Text. If you are not able to access it there, I have uploaded the text with the... Um, I have uploaded the text with the assignment. So remember, popular links, blended learning, scroll all the way down, click on the Hupton Miffler Harcourt icon, log in using your DP, DCPS login. Most of you will have a student ebook, which I have somewhere. There it is. And then you can do this two different ways. You can go to collection five, a matter of life or death from night, read the text, or you can click at the top and go to page 307, whichever is easiest for you. I like to change my page view to scrolling and make it a little bigger. Um, so let's read our about the author. We have been skipping this, but I really love this story, so I'm gonna read it. Ellie Wiesel, born 1928, is a teacher, writer, and Nobel Peace Prize winner. Born in Romania, Wiesel, along with his family, was among millions of European Jews deported to concentration camps during the Holocaust. In 1944, the Nazis sent the family to Auschwitz, where Wiesel's mother and sister perished. Months later, when Wiesel and his father were moved to Buchenwald concentration camp, his father also died. Buchenwald was eventually liberated, and Wiesel went on to write about his experiences. His many works include Dawn and The Accident, both sequels to Night. So if you've already read Night, maybe you want to read Dawn and the Accident, which are sequels to Night. From Night, Memoir by Elie Wiesel. The SS offered us a beautiful present for New Year. We had just returned from work. As soon as we passed the camp's entrance, we sent something out of the ordinary in the air. The roll call was shorter than usual. The evening soup was distributed at great speed swallowed as quickly. We were anxious. I was no longer in the same block as my father. They had transferred me to another commando, which is a German for command, a small group organization for laborers in the camp. So they switched him to another command. The construction one, where 12 hours a day I hauled heavy slabs of stone. The head of my new block was a German Jew, small with piercing eyes. 
That evening, he announced to us henceforth that no one was allowed to leave the block after evening soup. A terrible word began to circulate soon thereafter. Selection. So in this first page, we don't see any interactions with the prisoners, so we're going to move on. We knew what it meant. An SS would examine us. Whenever we found someone extremely frail, a Muslim was what we called those inmates, he would write down his number. Good for the crematorium. After the soup, we gathered between the bunks. The veterans told us, you're lucky to even to have been, sorry, let me start that over. You're lucky to have been brought here so late. Today, this is paradise compared to the camp was two years ago. Back then, Buna, a section of the concentration camp at Auschwitz, was a veritable hell. No water, no blankets, less soup and bread. At night, we slept almost naked, and the temperature was 30 below. We were collecting corpses by the hundreds every day. Work was very hard. Today, this is a little paradise. The capos back then was had orders to kill a certain number of prisoners every day, and every week, selection. A merciless selection. Yes, you are lucky. So capos is prisoners who perform certain duties for the guards. So this is our first interaction among the prisoners. And first thing you want to do is describe what's happening in your own words, just to make sure you understand what's going on. So here we have the veterans, people who endured the Auschwitz concentration camp, tell Ellie and other prisoners about the horrors of experiences in the past and explain why their current placement is a paradise in comparison. The veterans remind Ellie and others of their sheer luck. So we have our summary of what's happening, and now we need to think about the impact. How is strength developed throughout this interaction? Through this interaction, the veterans attempt to eliminate fear towards the current concentration camp and build appreciation despite their circumstances. So we are seeing these older um, inmates. Oh, old, so I guess not inmates. <laughs> Older prisoners of the camp um, trying to eliminate fear in these younger prisoners. And you can see how um, that's kind of a, a unity thing where they're at least being nice enough to say, hey, it's not so bad. It could be worse, right? It's trying to get them to appreciate what's going on. All right, moving on. Enough. Be quiet, I beg them. Tell your stories tomorrow, some other day. They burst out laughing. They were not veterans for nothing. Are you scared? We too were scared, and at the time for good reason. The old men stayed in their corner. Silent, motionless, hunted down creatures. Some were praying. One more hour, then we would know the verdict. Death or reprieve. And reprieve is the cancellation or postponement of punishment. And my father, I first thought of him now. How would he pass selection? He had aged so much. Our Black Hill Testa had not been outside a concentration camp since 1933. He had always been through all, he had already been through all the slaughterhouses, all the factories of death. Around nine o'clock, he came to stand in our midst. Achung! Which means attention in German. There was instant silence. Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. For the first time, his voice quivered. In a few moments, selection will take place. You'll have to undress completely. Then you will go, one by one, before the SS doctors. I hope you will pass, but you must try to increase your chances. Before you go into the next room, Try to move your limbs. Give yourself some color. Don't walk slowly. Run. Run as if the devil had the devil at your heels. Don't look at the SS. Run straight in front of you. He paused and then added, And most important, don't be afraid. That was the piece of advice we would have loved to be able to follow. So here's our next interaction. We have the interaction with the Block Testa. And it said, and we have our summary. The Block of Testa prisoner representative begins to announce that the selection, an examination procedure for determining next prisoners to be killed, will begin soon and explain the process to his fellow prisoners. 
He wishes them success in passing the exam and advises them to add color to their bodies, increasing the appearance of health by moving their limbs and running with full force. So then we want to think about the impact. How might this contribute to strength in the fight for survival? How might this change their mindset, which would drive their actions to survive. And we put, through this interaction, the prisoners learn how to train their bodies physically to avoid the perception of weakness in preparation for selection. Ultimately, the prisoners learn how to fight for survival by pushing their bodies to the limit. So if you want, you can use this as a guide for your next ones. Maybe you say something like, Ultimately, the prisoners learn how to fight for survival by whatever the um, excerpt from the text is showing you. All right, moving on. I undressed, leaving my clothes on the cot. Tonight, there was no danger that they would be stolen. Tibby and Yossi, who had changed commanders at the same time I did, came to urge me, let's stay together. It'll make us stronger. So that's our next stopping point, and you want to do a summary of what is going on. And I would write something like, Tibby and Yossi, the prisoners, uh, urge everyone to stay together in preparation for selection. with the SS doctors. Okay, so we have a short little summary of the interaction. And now we want to think about the impact. How is strength developed? So we want to think about how staying together would um, build strength. And you could say something like increased level of support for one another. Uh oh, I got a typo. Oof. In preparation for the exam. So oh, these other prisoners are saying, let's stay together, and it's building strength through unity, really. All right, moving on. Yasi was mumbling something. He probably was praying. I had never suspected that Yasi was religious. In fact, I'd always believed the opposite. Tibby was silent and very pale. All the block inmates stood naked between the rows of bunks. This must be how one stands for the last judgment. They're coming! The SS officers surrounded the notorious Dr. Oh man, I just learned how to say his name. Dr. Mengele. Mengele, Dr. Mengele. <laughs> uh, it says, Josef Mengele, Nazi physician at Ochoa, known for conducting cruel experiments on prisoners. He is notorious. He would um, do awful experiments on twins. I was reading about him. One night he killed 14 sets of twins just doing experiments on one twin and then just killing the other so that he could um, compare their bodies. He was a brutal, very nasty guy. It's crazy that Vassell met him or interacted with him. The very same who had received us in Birkenau. The Black Testa attempted a smile. He asked us, ready? Yes, we were ready. So were the SS doctors. Dr. Mengele was holding a list, our numbers. He nodded to the block of Testa. We can begin, as if this were a game. The first to go were the notables of the block. The Stubonol Testa, the Capos, the foremen, 
all of whom were in perfect physical condition, of course. Then came the ordinary prisoners' turns. Dr. Mengele looked them over from head to toe. From time to time, he noted a number. I had but one thought, not to have my number taken down and not to show my left arm. In front of me, there were only Tibby and Yossi. They passed. I had time to notice that Mengele had not written down their numbers. Someone pushed me. It was my turn. I ran without looking back. My head was spinning. You are too skinny. You are too weak. You are too skinny. You are good for the ovens. The race seemed endless. I felt as though I had been running for years. You are too skinny. You are too weak. At last I arrived. Exhausted when I had caught my breath, I asked Yossi and Tibby, Did they write me down? No, said Yossi, smiling. He added, Anyway, they couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't have. You were running too fast. I began to laugh. I was happy. I felt like kissing him. At that moment, the others did not matter. They had not written me down. Those whose numbers had been noted were standing apart, abandoned by the whole world. Some were silently weeping. So we're seeing how this unity is strengthening them. They were even able to crack jokes and laugh together um, because they have this unity, right? So they're in this awful, awful situation, but they're still laughing and cracking jokes because they have each other. The officers, the SS officers left. The Block Iltessa appeared. His face reflected our collective weariness. It all went well. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to anyone. Not to anyone. He was still trying to smile. So we're at our next point that we're stopping. And we want to um, summarize the interaction between the Block Iltessa and the other prisoners. So we can put the... Ooh, what's going on? The block Galtest Day, which I don't know if it'll fix it in German. No, it won't. Um, you can change to symbols if you like, if you um, want to have it spelled correctly, but I will also accept it like this. Urges inmates not to worry reassuring nothing will happen to anyone this is exactly what happens in the text and we're not changing anything we're just putting it in our own words so we internalize what's going on and that will help us better understand the impact how it might contribute to strength in the fight for survival. So if we think about the impact of this, he's basically like a, a guard, but he's also a prisoner. How him um, reassuring everyone might um, give strength to the prisoners. Um, so this guy saying that, who's been through it all, he's lived through multiple um, concentration camps, it restores optimism right optimism and hope so by saying everyone's going to be okay it um strengthens their mind okay moving on um he was still trying to smile a poor emaciated which means made extremely thin and weak jew questioned him anxiously his voice trembling but Sir, they did write me down. At that, the Block Iltese vented his anger. What? Someone refused to take his word? What is it now? Perhaps you think I'm lying? I'm telling you, once and for all, nothing will happen to you. Nothing. You just like to wallow in your despair, you fools. The bell rang, signaling the selection had ended in the entire camp. With all my strength, I had began to race towards Block 36. Midway, I met my father. He came toward me. So, did you pass? Yes, and you also. We were able to breathe again. My father had pre a present for me, a half-rationed bread, bartered for something he had found at the depot, a piece of rubber that could be used to repair a shoe. So, let's see how many we've done. One, two, three, four, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, we'll do one more together. So, this is another interaction with the... Um, with a prisoner, it is Vissel and his father. 
So we might write something like L. Oops, we're not going to write anything. Ellie and his father um, share the results of the selection, stating that they both passed, of course. And then Ellie's father gives him a ration um, and extra ration of bread. So now we want to think about the impact. Um, so he just got through with the selection and he's found out that they both passed. So of course we're going to have relief and shared celebration. So that's going to increase um, their optimism, right? And then this bread um, also gives some physical strength, right? Which is also very important, especially in um, what they're going through. Okay, so we're going to keep on reading. The bell. It was already time to part, to go to bed. The bell regulated everything. It gave me orders and I executed them, which means carry out or accomplish. Uh, blindly. I hated that bell. Whenever I happened to dream of a better world, I imagined a universe without a bell. A few days passed. We were no longer thinking about the selection. We went to work as usual and loaded the heavy stones onto the freight cars. The rations had grown smaller. That was the only change. We had risen at dawn as we did every day. We had received our black coffee, our ration of bread. We were about to head to the workyard as always. The block El Testa came running. Let's have a moment of quiet. I have here a list of numbers. I shall read them to you. All of those called will not go to work this morning. They will stay in the camp. Softly, he read some 10 numbers. We understood. These were the numbers from the selection. Dr. Mengele had not forgotten. The block El Testa returned to his room. The 10 prisoners surrounded him, clinging to his clothes. Save us, you promise. We want to go to the depot. We are strong enough to work. We, will, we are good workers. We can. We want. He tried to calm them, to reassure them about their fate, to explain to them that staying in the camp did not mean much, had no tragic significance. After all, I stay here all day. So that is our um, next line. You want to say what this interaction is showing. So we have the block il teste, calls numbers for selection. For those calls, he attempts to build comfort and minimize hopelessness. So we want to think about how that um, contributes to the strength in their fight for survival. So why is the block il teste still trying to reassure them? What is it doing? How is it helping build strength through unity? All right, moving on. The argument was more than flimsy. He realized it, and without another word, locked himself in his room. The bell had just rung. Form ranks! Now, it no longer mattered that the work was hard. All that mattered was to be far from the block, far from the crucible, which is a vessel used for melting materials at high temperatures of death, far from the center of hell. I saw my father running in my direction. Suddenly, I was afraid. What's happening? He was out of breath, hardly able to open his mouth. Me too, me too. They told me to stay at the camp. They had recorded his number without his noticing. What are we going to do? I said anxiously. But it was he who tried to reassure me. It's not certain yet. There's still a chance. Today they will do another selection, a decisive one, or a final or concluding one. So here's our next... Um, interaction between the father and um, Ellie and you want to write down what's going on and then think about what the father is doing what he has said it's not certain yet there's still a chance today they will do another selection a decisive one and um, think about the impact how is that building strength through unity I said nothing he felt time was running out he was speaking rapidly. 
He wanted to tell me so many things. His speech became confused. His voice was choked. He knew that I had to leave in a few moments. He was going to remain alone. So alone. Here, take this knife, he said. I won't need it anymore. You may find it useful. Also, take this spoon. Don't sell it. Quickly, go ahead. Take what I'm giving you. My inheritance. So this is our next interaction. Uh, father giving Ellie this knife and spoon. And think about the significance of that. What is the impact? How is this going to aid in his survival? Um, I would think more about a physical aspect rather than a mental one here. All right. Don't talk like that, Father. I was on the verge of breaking into sobs. I don't want you to say such things. Keep the spoon and knife. You'll need them as much as I. We'll see each other tonight after work. Um, so we're stopping again here, um, and now it's kind of the tables have turned. Instead of the father reassuring Ellie, Ellie is reassuring his father. And um, so you want to write down what's going on in the interaction, and then the impact. How is it building strength through unity? He looked at me with his tired eyes, veiled by despair. He insisted, I am asking you, take it. Do as I ask you, my son. Time is running out. Do as your father asks you. Our capo shouted the order to march. The commando headed toward the camp gate. Left, right. I was biting my lips. My father had remained near the block, leaning against the wall. Then he began to run, to try to catch up with us. Perhaps he'd forgotten to tell me something? But we were marching too fast. Left, right. We were at the gate. We were being accounted. Around us, the din of military music. Then we are outside. All day I plodded around like a sleepwalker. Tibby and Yossi would call out to me from time to time, trying to reassure me, as did the capo who had given me easier tasks that day. I felt sick at heart how kindly they treated me. Um, so now we have a new interaction with Tibby, Yasso, and the capo. Um, so you want to write down what they are doing to help Ellie, and then how that is contributing to building his um, strength for survival in this, you know, really dark and horrible time. Like an orphan, I thought, even now my father is helping me. I myself didn't know whether I wanted the day to go by quickly or not. I was afraid of finding myself alone that evening. How good it would be to die right here. At last, we began the return journey. How I longed for an order to run. The military march, the gate, the camp. I ran towards Block 36. Were there still miracles on this earth? He was alive. He had passed the second selection. He had still proved his usefulness. I gave him back his knife and spoon. So this is the last interaction uh, where Ellie runs back to the camp and sees his father alive. And what does that do to Ellie's mindset? Think about how it builds his strength. And once you have done that, you have finished all of the noticings I found. Take a moment to review your graphic organizer and add any additional information you believe is worth recording. Once you have completed this step in assignment 4B, you'll be able to return to the slideshow presentation um, I'm not going to go back to the slideshow. Let's just go to assignment 4C. So hopefully you enjoyed reading the text Night by Ellie Vissel. This was an excerpt pulled from a longer memoir, which is widely available. Check it out if you're interested. Um, I have included a link to the full text on the last slide of your PowerPoint. So if you don't have anything to read this week for your independent reading log, even though you might have read Night already, maybe you loved it and want to revisit it, um, you can use that link and you can read it this week for your reading log. I think that's a great idea. Um, now if you're ready to move forward, you're all set to complete the last part of the assignment. Four, which is assignment 4C, please locate assignment 4C. And we know we still have our independent reading log, so it is not really... The last part of the assignment. Follow along as I read the directions. In the space below, craft your response to the essential question, 
How does the author develop the theme of strength through unity in his memoir, Night? You are encouraged to utilize your graphic organizer to assist in crafting your response. Be sure to use the CCC's model. So remember, um, we are not using RCCs like we have all year. We are finding three examples from the text and explaining how evidence reflects strength being developed within the prisoners and overcoming the horrors of the concentration camp. So we're getting rid of that explain what, and instead we're only doing the analysis part. So we're finding our evidence, and then we are explaining how that evidence reflects strength being developed within the prisoners and overcoming the horrors of the concentration camp, right? Okay. Just thought I would clarify. You're um, encouraged to use your graphic organizer. Oh, we already read that part. <laughs> your uh, thoroughly written paragraph should be approximately 10 to 12 sentences. You do not have to label your sentences or separate them into chunks like the model shows. Keep it all thoroughly crafted in one coherent paragraph. Again, please do not label each part. R-A-C-E-C-E. -E -E. I don't want to see it. Write it as one coherent paragraph with transitions and everything. This assignment should take approximately 20 to 30 minutes to complete if you have effectively completed part 4B while reading. So this is not something you do quickly at the end. Maybe you take a break. Maybe you come back the next day and you finish your essential question because it should take 20 to 30 minutes if you're doing a good job. So good luck. When in doubt, refer to your guide. If you need further assistance in developing strong writing, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me during the live sessions. I am available every day. I see the same faces all the time. Please come in if you need help. Uh, pause the video here while you complete the essential question. All right, everyone, I so, so, so appreciate uh, you engaging in our virtual classroom this week and look forward to continue learning in this new innovative way as we await our return to campus. Don't forget to complete your weekly reading log as well. Stay tuned for our next lesson, which will be available to you each Monday. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. Hang in there. Remember, if you need help, with the assignment or just need someone to talk to, I am here, just reach out to me. Um, I miss you guys, have a good one.